طيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم so last time we had يعني a, a small discussion regarding some basic concepts uh, so we talked about what internet is we talked about uh, the internet architecture in terms of edge network in terms of core network and the differences between them so today inshallah we'll start with the access methods as we have discussed before so the first thing in the in the edge network is that the end devices they try to get access to the internet okay so uh, uh, to get access to the internet we have some access methods okay um, so we need to discuss these access methods uh, today so there are some access methods which are typically used by residential uh, 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 users residential users which means that like somebody in the in, in his or her house they want to get access to the internet okay so there are certain access methods which are customized for household users this is uh, 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 this might be slightly different if we're talking about an institution like Mr. Qatar University if Qatar University wants to have access to the internet uh, definitely they have to have certain uh, 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 sophisticated agreement with the with the ISP like Masan Uridu. So in that case, the agreement between uh, an entity like Qatar University and Uridu is definitely different compared to a, a simple agreement which we all have with uh, Uridu. صح? And the type of access methods that we are using will uh, definitely be slightly different as well. Definitely for, uh, for, uh, for institutional and for residential, we have also the mobile access networks, which means that in addition to the fixed access network methods, uh, like for example, we'll talk about some of these methods, these required some wiring, some fixed wiring, okay? Through this fixed wiring, we get access to the uh, internet as we will see. But some of these access methods also include using or utilizing the mobile networks. Um, by mobile network, I mean like 5G networks of Oridu or something like that. So in that case, we are not, we are not hooked up to the internet through wires, right? So we can move. So the, 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 the main thing about wireless is mobility, okay? It's to be able to move around, okay? You don't have to be, to be hooked up with a, with a wire, uh, yet you can access the internet content from anywhere at any point of time using your wireless device. So that utilizes a different access method which is through the mobile networks, okay? So we, we need to talk about that as well. Type. So the first access method, <coughs> the first <coughs> access method that we will talk about is called digital subscriber line. How many of you is aware of this? Or I don't want to say used it because it's it's obsolete now. Nobody uses it. Yeah, about 15 years ago. Yeah, so we are old people, so we know what this is. So 15 years ago, or maybe slightly more. We, we had the, the digital subscribe, subscriber line, or what sometimes they call it ADSL. A here stands for a asymmetric digital subscriber line. And we'll talk about what asymmetric here means. So the main idea of, of DSL is the fact that, you know, service providers, uh, uh, they wanted to give people access to the internet through some infrastructure that's already there to minimize cost, okay? So they said, instead of building a specific infrastructure to give people access to the internet, we might as well use the infrastructure that's already there. So what was already there at that time was the, what we call a, the public switch telephone network, which is the landline network. This landline network has been there for quite some time. Huh? Uh, so these landline networks, they, they use switches, heavy switches, right? And this infrastructure, they have invested huge amount of uh, investment to build that uh, infrastructure okay for landlines so that was already there so the first thing they thought about so why not use this existing infrastructure also to have internet what this means is that this is this was the the public switch telephone network was mainly designed for voice signal right so so to talk about the voice signal from the signals point of view okay Voice signal, the voice signal has a bandwidth of, if this is the frequency, the voice signal has a bandwidth of cam, cam oh, yeah, 4K, aslan. <laughs> Above 4K, 
is considered for us a ultrasound. Ultrasound. We, يعني our ears cannot distinguish beyond 4K. Okay? طيب. So, physically, بقى, these lines, they are telephone lines. These telephone lines, by the way, these are, if you, if you, if you cut one, some of the, you don't want to do that at home, but يعني, if you want to, to see what, what it's composed of from inside, there are four wires, they are twisted like this. So, four wires twisted like this, okay? And there, there is like some kind of shielding or a jacket. That's it. So, from physics point of view, what is the theoretical bandwidth of this uh, telephone line? It's actually slightly above one megahertz. Okay? So from, from the physics point of view. Okay? Which means that you have all this room which is deployed. It's in the infrastructure. But it's not actually being utilized for voice communication. Or even if, if, the, uh, if the signal is beyond 4K, our ears cannot distinguish more than 4K. So that's the main motivation behind DSL. So they said that, okay, so we can actually utilize this remaining bandwidth, which is significant, for data communication over the internet. Okay? So the way we do that is that we say, okay, so this is the telephone. It's hooked up to the line, and the line is, is a is, uh, uh, is extending to the service provider. In our case, it's Uridu, right? So what they, what they have developed is, is, is this splitter. A splitter is also a mixer. So if the signal is coming this way, it's a mixer. If it's coming this way, it's a splitter, okay? So a splitter is actually a mixer as well. So, so they, they, they have our, uh, uh, our uh, uh, workstations. They are connected with what we call a DSL model, and that's what we used to have at home. So every household has a DSL model. And this model, it does nothing but to get the data from the workstation, and then what it does is that it performs some kind of modulation. And by modulation here, I mean that it actually shifts the signal in the frequency domain to be in that range, which is above 4K. That's what it does. That's the only thing it does, okay? As we have discussed in Network One or any wireless communication course, if you, are, if you have two signals sent at the same time concurrently, but they have different frequencies, they do not collide, صح? There is no interference between the two, صح? And that's the whole idea of DSL. So uh, the, the data that's coming from the workstation, the DSL modem will shift it in the frequency domain, so it will be in that, in that range, above the 4K, okay? And then you mix the two signals together. By mixing here, I don't mean like overlap. There's no overlap because in the frequency domain, they are separate. And that's it. So at the, um, at the, at the ISP level, so what Uridu will have now is that they will have the infrastructure for the public switch telephone network and they will also have the infrastructure for the internet. Okay? And they, depending on the traffic that is coming in, so you can split the traffic. The voice signal will go to the PST, uh, PSTN and the internet traffic will go through the uh, uh, other core network infrastructure. What here? This is called the DSL access multiplexer. That's what it's called. Access multi multiplexer. Meshi? Type. So from 0 to 4K, this is the normal voice communication. Okay? We, we, we are not going to touch that part. And then from 4K, all the way to one megahertz, we can use that for internet traffic. Okay? Right. The way that they, 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 they divide, because for internet, for internet traffic, you need a download and upload, right? So you need bi-directional communication, sir. Huh? So they said, okay, so, so from 4K to 50K, okay, this will be for upload. We call that upstream. Upload manai from the workstation to the internet. That's what upstream means. What hadith? Okay. And then from 50k all the way to 1 megahertz, which is in 950 kilohertz bandwidth, will be allocated for downstream, which means that 
this workstation wants to download something from the internet. So the traffic that is coming this way can have up to 950 kilohertz bandwidth. طبعا, this bandwidth will be mapped to specific bit rate. ماشي؟ الناس اللي خدت network 2 if you have started network 2 or any signals course you have some line coding techniques and stuff like that which allows you to have a signals a signal uh, uh, any data like مثلا let's say any data مثلا 0 1 0 1 like this you convert it to some uh, digital signal okay and this from digital signal you can use some techniques to to do like modulation things like that you 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 convert this to an analog signal with a specific frequency specifications then you can transfer it over the line okay so so this signal this analog signal needs to have this bandwidth which restricts the amount of bit rate that you can have depending on the mechanism that you use we're not going to, to study the details of line coding techniques and stuff if you want you can go back to network 2 and study all these things or any signals course واضح؟ But what is being transferred is analog. Analog في الآخر طبعًا. Yeah, yeah. On physical lines, at the end, it's an analog signal. It has to be an analog signal. Okay. طيب. So based on that, so for for uh, uh, so for up uh, for the upstream, the طبعًا from 4K to 50K we have about 46K صح؟ So this 46K can give you up to 1 megabits per second. 1 megabits per second. Huh? The, the unit here is different. Huh? So 46K, using specific techniques for line coding and so on, can give you a bit rate of up to 1 megabits per second. ماشي عشان برضو حد ما يبقاش ايه في confusion. So 46K اللي جاب 1 megabits per second. The 46K, depending on the line coding scheme okay can give you a specific bit rate ماشي so 1 megabits per second in the upstream but the downstream is 8 times طيب why that's why it's called the asymmetric digital subscriber line because the downstream has to be much larger compared to the upstream what, what is the idea behind this Adal Lee why because in the household we tend to download data more than we upload Upload means what? Means that you are working as a server. صح? But download, everybody works as a client. يعني everybody works as a client. You download, you tend to download data more than you upload data. Right? So that's why typically they like always to have the downstream much bigger compared to the upstream. واضح كده? طيب. One main aspect in this DSL is that here we're talking about, and we will talk about this more again, we're talking about PSTN and PSTN, the public switch telephone network, we're talking about dedicated lines. Dedicated line. We'll talk about the concept of circuit switching in a minute, later on. Okay? So PSTN was built on the concept of circuit switching, which means that the, 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 this line is dedicated to you, to your household. Okay? So even though here we're talking about one megabits per second, typically, by the way, you get, this is the theoretical bit rate, but typically you get less than that due to some imperfections and stuff like that. So the typical rates that we used to enjoy يعني, 15 years ago was about 256. Okay, of course, nowadays, alhamdulillah, we enjoy much more than that uh, with the fiber to home. We'll talk about this. Um, so that's the typical, the typical throughput, the effective throughput that we used to get using, and this is dedicated line. Okay. طيب. في ال DSL model, this is exactly what we did. يعني أثناء ما أنت يعني while you are talking, having conversation, voice over the phone, you can also download data, and there is no interference between the two because they are working in two different frequencies. Eh? على workstation هنا. So you had, we used to have workstations, laptops, things like that. These are connected to the DSL model. Okay? And we used to have telephone lines. Dedicated that telephone lines, they had land lines, not uh, mobile phones. Land lines. 
Okay? So when we talk over the phone with someone, that does not interfere with somebody else who is downloading or uploading something to the internet. Because of the because of this concept. That the data which is converted to a signal does not interfere with the voice signal because they are working on two different frequencies. Okay? So what happens here is that this access multiplexer, what it does is that it filters out the data communication, sends it here, and it filters out the voice, and it sends it here. That's what it does. Yes. Why am I saying dedicated line stressing on this? Because similar to the service providers, who, talk, who talked about investing in PSTNs, there are some other service providers which have also tried to leverage the infrastructure that they have. So this is not common in, in our area, Khalas. This technology is called cable TV or cable models. So similar to the PSTNs, we had other types of infrastructure for TV signals or for TV broadcasts. Here, in our area, in our countries, we use satellites for TV, صح? for TV broadcast. In North America and in other parts of the world, small parts of the world, they use the technology of cable TV. So we used to have cables. We didn't use satellite. I lived in Canada. We used to have cable TV. We didn't have any satellite. We don't have these like big plates. We didn't use that. We had the cable TV. And this cable TV, cable TV, TV is hooked up with coaxial, صح? coaxial cable. That's why it's called hybrid fiber coax, because the, all the TV network was using coaxial cable, right? So the same idea, so they thought, OK, so similar to using the PSTN infrastructure, we can also use the, t the TV network infrastructure. So the exact same thing. OK? Type. So here, as well, we have asymmetric. Same thing. So the downstream is 30 megabits per second, of course, above uh, uh, the DSL. And why is this? Why here the bit rate is higher? Because, can you, anyone guess? It's related more to the to the to the theoretical bandwidth of the coaxial cable, which is which is significantly from the physics point of view, it's bigger compared to the uh, UTP or the cable phone cable. The phone cable has limitations in terms of theoretical bandwidth. Okay, coaxial. So we have in the phone it has up to, for example, one megahertz. For coaxial, it's 500 megahertz. Okay, so the 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 the, the non al but the TV the TV signal itself has bigger bandwidth as well. It's not like uh, voice. Voice, we're on a 4K. The TV is, is much larger than that. But still, you still have huge amount of bandwidth from the coaxial cable, which is also not utilized. So that unused bandwidth can give you data rates which is much higher compared to the DSL. However, we'll see the other trick here. The trick. It looks like much higher, and that's why, actually, if, we, if you do not understand technology, some people, they rushed into getting this service, and then it ended up that the actual bit rate that you get here is very frustrating. In many cases, it's less than DSL. Yeah, but there is a trick. So we'll talk about this. So the downstream is the 30 megabits per second, and the upstream is 2 megabits per second. So at least double the DSL, from the, from the look of it. So it looks nice, OK? So uh, the network has a mix of uh, coaxial cables and fiber. So basically, what you do is that all the household, all the houses, they are hooked up with a coaxial cable in the TV. So we all have that, صح? These coaxial cables are hooked up uh, to one يعني, district-wide uh, 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 fiber nodes. 
And these fiber nodes, they, they, they take the traffic from all the household in this district, and then it feeds it to fiber optic uh, cables to the, uh, uh, to the service provider. And we'll see the architecture now. Okay? Type. So the, the network of cable and fiber attaches homes to the ISP. Homes share access to the homes share access to the router, and that's the key here. Unlike DSL, which is dedicated access. So the main idea here is that the TV network is based on broadcast. يعني أنا لما أتكلم على when we talk about phone calls, each two people they talk to each other. We need some dedicated line. صح؟ For each two people talking to each other, we need some dedicated line. But TV broadcast is based on what? It's based on based it's based on stations broadcasting the same TV signal to to everyone. So the TV signal is inherently based on broadcast. So you broadcast all the channels, okay, to the to to everyone, and then you can switch from one channel to another. But the TV signal is broadcast. So what you receive as a as a TV as a TV signal is similar to what you receive is similar to what I receive. صح? Okay. So in that case, the TV network is based on broadcast, unlike PSTNs, which requires two voice, two, two people communicating in voice, okay? So what we are talking about in terms of voice is different from any other people who are talking, doing part voice communication. That's why you see the network, the network infrastructure is fundamentally different. Unlike the dedicated lines for PSTN, here you see that all the houses, all the houses in a specific area are all connected through coaxial cable. Okay? So, which means that the signal that is going here is the same. Okay? So there is no dedicated line here. Meshi? Nafsi say the signal that is going here is the same. In fact, this fiber node is nothing but like a hub. So it replicates the signal here and here. Okay? And that's what happens in the satellite. The satellite actually broadcasts the same TV signal to everyone. And it has all the channels and you can move from one channel to another. And this is the trick, but because if we want to use this infrastructure to provide internet uh, access, internet requires bi-directional data communication, which is different from each two people. Okay? So, this is the main issue. In each household, similar to DSL, in each household, we used to have a, we used to have a load, semi cable modem. Similar to DSL modem. And this corresponds to the ADSL access multiplexer. This is the, this is the exact same thing. Okay, so from here to here, it's the exact same thing. The, 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 the difference is in the middle. In the middle here, this network is based inherently on broadcast. So, so when we say that the download stream is 30 megabits per second, this is the, the best stream in this direction. Okay, if, if, if Imagine that if 100 households are downloading from the internet, they are sharing this. They are effectively sharing this bit rate. Unlike PSTNs, because PSTNs, you have dedicated line. Okay? So that's why in Canada, we used to use this service. So in, in different times of the day, you have totally different experience. So in peak hours, مثلا, we used to be extremely frustrated. Extremely frustrating. You download a file, it takes hours. Why? Because everybody is doing the same. And this bit rate is shared between hundreds of people. But how the same thing. The exact same thing. In terms of frequency, you have the TV signal. This is the TV signal, which has all the channels. Okay? And you have another. Another bandwidth for a for data communication, similar to DSL, exactly. Yeah, 
No, it's, it's data. Here, this household has a TV. They can watch TV. But this household, this same household, has some uh, workstations. They are communicating data over the internet. The TV. The TV. Najabi. Ah, yes. Well, that's, that's what happened. TV signal, TV signal, this is coming from certain stations. There is a certain stations, the stations there broadcast content, TV content. This TV content is sent over this particular band. Okay? When it gets sent, it gets sent to everyone, the same signal. Same signal is sent to everyone, even these five... These fiber nodes, by the way, they do nothing but replicating the signal, the same signal. They work as a hub, basically. But so they convert from fiber to a to coaxial. That's it. Maybe? So the same TV signal is sent to everyone. But the problem is, for internet, I don't want to send and receive the exact same thing that you send and receive. Mm. So, here that is, comes the difference. This one is downloading something. This one is downloading something else. So basically, you have two logical traffics that is going on the same line. So they are, these are technically sharing this betray back. So imagine if you have hundreds of these people. Everybody is downloading different uh, 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 files. Imagine. They are sharing this. Hawanti, what's, what's confusing you in nowadays... الدنيا كلها ساحب على بعضها يعني احنا وي ار وي ار يعني التي في بالنسبه لنا سيميلر تو الديتا سيميلر تو صح بس ذاتس وات ذس واز نوت ذا كيس فيو ييرز باك ان ذا باك سيرفيس بروفايدرز دي يوز تو هاف انفراستراكشر فور تي في انفراستراكشر فور فويس انفراستراكشر فور فور ديتا واخد بالك؟ اكزاكتلي ما ذاتس وات كونفيوزز يو That was not the case back. In the past, we're talking about here on the TV signal that came from satellite. Okay? Which is totally different from any, any kind of internet traffic. Okay? But nowadays, we can, yes, we can watch TV content, even on demand or something like that. No, this service is different. This service uses the internet access methods. Okay? We're talking about the legacy TV signal. which was based on broadcast from satellites or through cable TV or whatever. Does it use FDA? For... Distributing the... I'm talking about... It depends. In many cases, this uses some kind of packet switching. For packet switching, it doesn't use FDMA. And that's why I was saying that um, this bit rate... is technically shared between all the household. But again, يعني, the, 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 the shared access method, we'll talk about shared access method for, for those of you who, do, who don't يعني, know what this is. The shared access method on this bandwidth doesn't have to be the same. So you can use, يعني, here you can use circuit switching, here you can use packet switching, you can use different uh, uh, sharing uh, methods. Imagine, we'll talk about this. But by the way, this is called cable modem uh, 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 eh? transmission system. How is it? Our termination system. And the idea is to separate the TV signal from the data. So this is through modulation. So we put a, modula uh, a modem at the household and we put a similar thing which reflects at the service provider side. This is what we have nowadays. What we have nowadays is fiber to home. So fiber to home, not only did it promote dedicated lines, but these lines are fiber. On fiber, the theoretical bandwidth for fiber is huge. And nobody on earth was able to achieve close to the limits of fiber. Yeah. with any devices that we have on earth nowadays. 
the theoretical limit for bit rate, I read it once, it was 100 terabits per second for on, on, on the fiber line, point to point. Yeah. And the, 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 there's no يعني, uh, device on earth that can achieve closer to that. Or as, as, uh, as far as I heard, above hatta 2 terabits per second. But technically, one fiber line can, can actually carry the traffic of not only a, a, a house, a continent, يعني, a set of countries. Yeah, theoretically, again, but in order to achieve that, uh, it's not possible nowadays because in order to achieve that limit, you have to process, you have to process signals in the optical domain, and there's there's no such thing. You have to process signal purely in the optical domain to be able to achieve that rate, and that's not possible. But there is a huge amount of research in that direction, by the way. Mesh, the important thing is the cable is made of glass. Glass, in the end. Glass. Yes, Mo, this is bad. This is the issue. Yani, uh, this is the issue that we need to talk about. This is the issue that we need to talk about. The, the, the fiber cable itself, it has different types. Uh, the, the, there are certain types that uses um, a certain, uh, certain type of glass, which is yani, very directed, and they use laser beams and so on, and they can get rid of, they can, sorry, get uh, up to kilo, kilometers, uh, I think like up to 60 kilometers, in terms of range. Okay, and there is uh, other types of fiber that uses, uh, you know, cheaper technology of LEDs as a, as a light source to send the, uh, the signal inside the, that glass, and that can get to maybe two kilometers, not, not more than that. Again, in network one, we talked about the difference between they call it single beam and multi beam fibers. In any case, يعني, even even with multi beam fibers, can give us again. Theoretical bit rate that we cannot achieve uh, nowadays. Yeah, in terms tens of terabits per second, the maximum we can get nowadays, and I think this is even experimental, is above slightly above two or three terabits per second, not more than that. Type the 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 here we're talking about the dedicated lines, fiber to home. So they the each household will have optical fiber, and then we have this optical splitter which can get the traffic from multiple households or districts, and then it feeds it to their service provider. This is the central office. So this is, uh, this is the uh, optical splitter, and this we call, we call this a, uh, uh, optical line termination. So you have optical network termination and this optical line termination. One is at the household. So this optical line termination is actually integrated in the, in the, in the router that we have at home. So that actually converts all the traffic that is coming from here, it converts it to actually an optical signal to be able to get transferred here. Meshi? So with that fiber, everything can go on the fiber. You can have that triple play, you can have uh, TV content, you can have that uh, uh, internet transmit, you can have whatever you want. Now. Okay? So if, if you ever encounter any, مثلا, uh, slight, um, uh, مثلا, uh, uh, low bit rate, don't blame the fiber. Huh? The fiber is, 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 it can carry <laughs> more than what you can imagine. But the, the, the bottleneck is here. The bottleneck is always here. Because at the end of the day, you have to convert the optical signal to, again, digital signal which gets transferred over the internet infrastructure, so the bottleneck gets here. Definitely here, we can, we can carry as much traffic as we want. Type. So the bit rates here can get, can get to يعني, easily one gigabits per second and more. Okay? So what we need to talk about here is the difference between is the, is the technology that's used in, in this optical splitter, actually. So in this optical splitter, can have one of these two technologies, okay? One is called passive optical network here. By passive optical network, I mean that this optical splitter works as a hub, technically. Works as a hub. That's the answer. Hub, by the way, hub means that, well, no need for power. 
ओके सिग्नल रिप्लिकेटेड ओके सो इट्स प्लाइन रिप्लिकेशन फॉर सिग्नल सो फ्रॉम हियर टू हियर द सिग्नल इज द सेम फ्रॉम हियर टू हियर द सिग्नल गेट्स रिप्लिकेटेड ऑन ऑल दीज पोर्ट्स ब्लाइंडली ओके एंड दैट्स वाई डोंट नीड पावर बिकॉज आई डोंट हैव टू कन्वर्ट द सिग्नल फ्रॉम वन डोमेन टू अनदर In other words, it's dumb. It doesn't do anything. It just replicates like a mirror. So, talking about uh, optical signal here, it's like a mirror. It's like mirror that that replicates the light signal to different directions. That's it. Okay. So, uh, um, so that's the first one. The second one, ba, it's different. It's active optical network. By the way, I. I tried to know the technology that's used in Qatar, and I think, I think, yeah, I think with yeah, some level of certainty that it's PON, and not. Uh, and why is that? Because for PON, for PON as well, uh, uh, the 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 signal range is slightly less. Why? Because here it's the same signal and it gets attenuated as it goes through the uh, the fiber line. Okay. So if there is power here, if this is powered, this means that the signal gets regenerated. So the signal here is different from here. You see? Which means that this is a renewable signal. A renewable signal can, can get transferred much longer range. صح? Because it's like the power has not, has, has not attenuated. Because it's, it's, it's re-energized. It's like you regenerate the signal again. And? But for uh, PON, no power, so the signal has a slightly, uh, a slightly shorter range. Imagine. So active optical network, ba, so this is passive or uh, PON. So uh, uh, well, this is shorter, eh? shorter range. Okay. For active optical network, it's the opposite. So you have the, the here these devices power and that's why I suspect that here in Qatar it's PON because I, I, I see that these splitters we see them they are in the manholes and I, th I don't think they are power and that's why I suspect that this is uh, the technology here in Qatar is PON uh, more than AON so these are powered signal is not replicated this works actually as a switch في الفرق بين السويتش والهاب كله بس تحت you remember the difference between switch and hub so switch is not completely done the switch will actually first convert the signal from the optical domain to the electric do electrical domain or digital domain okay and it processes the signal in the in the in the optical domain in sorry in the sorry in the electrical domain okay So it may, in fact, look at the traffic and process it. And based on that, it sends it here or here or here. So it doesn't blindly replicate the signal. It actually processes the signal and sends it in a specific direction. Hmm. Sorry? Yes, of course. That's what we studied in Network 1. <laughs> so how, how is is blindly broadcasts or replicates the signal in all directions okay but the switch is slightly more intelligent but in order to do that for for optical signals you cannot process the optical signal in the optical domain you cannot okay so that's why here you need power labor first you need to convert the optical signal to the electric domain process in the electrical domain and then regenerate the signal in the optical domain you have to do that okay and when, once you do that the signal here is regenerated which means it can go longer in terms of range imagine uh, any questions Why 
for? That's a very good question. Uh, the the uh, the uh, the AON, AON of course is more intelligent, so you don't have to replicate the signal. So it has some implication, masalan, masalan, yeah, on security. Any any broadcast network has some implications on security because if you replicate the signal on all the on all directions, by the way, this means that the signal that goes to this household is similar to here, is similar to here, which means that technically all the content that's going to this guy is also going to this guy. Okay? So sometimes there is you know, some service providers they, they 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 like to have like some private traffic that goes to the, to, to a different household. And you can achieve that only by using a switch. A switch will not blindly replicate the signal. Will actually send the signal based on some processing in the in the electric domain. So Basic, basically, basically, physical address. So it, it looks at the physical address and then it sends it. But in order for, for it to do that, it has to convert from optical to, the, to, to electrical, okay? Process it, and then from electrical to optical. It has to do that, okay? But of course, in terms of cost, uh, the, the, the PON is, is less cost, of course. The, the hub, is, 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 is always cheaper compared to the switch. So that's why I suspect that most probably what we have is PON rather than AON. Maybe? That's what we have. That's what we have nowadays. Of course, when it comes to an institutional uh, uh, access method, usually we use this method, which is a Ethernet uh, internet, which means that we have a complete uh, packet network, like here at QU, we have our own network, and then the institutional router we usually we, we usually call it a default gateways. These default gateways are connected directly to the ISP through some bad dedicated lines or something. Okay, so this is an institutional network, big network, but full. It's full of enterprise routers and switches and and so on, like QU. And you have one, or maybe more, by the way, of these institutional routers, we, we call them a default gateways. Okay? And these default gateways are hooked up through some dedicated lines. Okay? Wired, but some dedicated lines. And here, but we have a very... So the, the, the traffic here can get to a 10 gigabits per second Ethernet. I'm not sure if there is a, a, a technology above 10 gigabits per second, but this is the latest that I know of for Ethernet, 10 gigabit per second. But this 10 gigabit per second is for the whole institution, for QU. You see? So if you want, for example, more than 10 gigabits per second, what would you do? You have more than one of these routers. <coughs> and you have different, more than one link to the service provider. So you have 10 gigabits per second going in this direction, 10 gigabits per second going in this direction. So in that case, you can have more traffic. ماشي طيب ال the the last and this is actually the predominant access method that we all have nowadays as well uh, which is wireless so wireless access methods of course uh, wireless that is very complicated so you have technologies like wireless lans and you have technologies like the broadband wireless access Broadband wireless access or wider area wireless access, which is through the the, the 5G or 4G uh, towers that we have, and of course wireless lands we have Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi B or G, which uh, uh, can carry a rate of up to uh, 54 uh, uh, megabits per second. Nowadays we have technologies uh, in Wi-Fi that touches one gigabits per second, like مثلا لو ال 802.11 AC. ماشي. So we are getting into one gigabits per second. And by the way, even for 5G, we are getting, we are touching that rate as well. Even for broadband for long range. For 5G, at least, you can get one gigabits per second uh, uh, traffic bit rate, which is, which is huge, طبعا. we didn't have this. For wireless, يعني, this is huge. يعني, can you imagine you can download high definition uh, movie 
uh, two gigs in two seconds using 5G. It looks marvelous, but but there is there is again there is there is a drawback. There is there is an issue for that. Stop. Yes, yes, this is cellular. Yes, this is exactly cellular. And this actually starts from the the data traffic data data communication started from which generation exactly? Yeah, now we had the first generation was completely analog. So second generation, we 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 teach that in wireless communication course. But we started to have actual internet communication starting from 2.5G. Not even to second generation, I can't see. Second generation, I can't see. Can best mugarat the voice codes best. Only voice codes. We didn't have internet traffic. Internet traffic started in 2.5G. Now these are these are technologies for 3G, and then we have 3.5G. Now Alhamdulillah, we have. 5G now, and we are even talking about 6G in the upcoming few years. Okay, but now we, come on here in, in in 3G, we used to have one megabits per second, and that was revolutionary. With 5G, we can we can now get close to one gigabits per second. But this can only be achieved. It cannot be achieved in Qatar, by the way. Khal, it cannot be achieved in Qatar because. The 5G deployment in Qatar does not have basic ingredients of 5G, which is millimeter wave. Millimeter wave does not exist in Qatar until now. There's no deployment for millimeter wave. You can only achieve one gigabit per second using some spectrum aggregations, for those of you who know what spectrum is. And that, that can only be achieved with micro, uh, millimeter wave technology, and that, that that's not. So in Qatar, يعني, if we get, for Five or six hundred uh, uh, megabits per second. This would be good. This would be excellent. Hmm? No, not fake. Not fake. But you can you can always deploy part of the standard, and you can still comply with the standard. It's not. Uh, you can still call it five G, but there is a there is a, 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 a key part in five G which is not which it requires new infrastructure. And you don't want to spend or invest in building that infrastructure because millimeter wave, by the way, requires, يعني, new towers with point to point. يعني, it's not possible. يعني. Okay, but for those of you who are more interested in this area, wireless communication course talks a lot about this. Talk. Spend hours to answer this question. <laughs> very, uh, a very good question. Um, a very short answer. It depends on so many things. So many things. Uh, by the way, Bardo, to be clear, you know, in, in some areas, the 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 base stations they only support 4G and not 5G. And the good thing about 5G is that every generation is always backward compatible. Okay, so if you work, if you have a tower that supports 5G, technically it supports 4G and 3G. Okay, but there are certain towers that support only 3G. Sometimes it depends on the signal strength that you have with the uh, with the tower. If you are very far, if you are close, okay. Sometimes it has to do with the uh, with the energy consumption on your mobile. Uh, there are so many factors. So many factors. Okay, but uh, in some cases the tower can switch from uh, uh, 4G to 5G if your phone has some capabilities to support 5G, and in certain areas, depending on the signal strength and and and, it actually switches you back to 4 4 4G because of the fact that this tower supports only 4G. Yani there is so much details to this. a huge amount of research in this area. Uh, the fact that you, you do some handoffs from one tower to another, when does this happen? Um, because you are moving, you are driving, so you are moving from one tower to another. 
So this tower supports 5G, 4G, 3G, this tower supports Kazan. So when do you have the switch? When do you have to switch from this to that? Whether you, when you switch, you switch to 4G or 5G, huge, huge details. Why Max? Why Max is one of the technology technologies for يعني they call it برضو fictitiously 4G but well, yeah, actually 3.5G Why Max started uh, 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 to uh, come into the surface with LTE you know, uh, LTE so they, they came about at the similar time but then LTE was really the predominant and Why Max is currently almost died and nobody's adopting Why Max both of them they started in 3.5G and then uh, LTE found its way through 4G and now to 5G still Bardui based on LTE technology. Any any questions? So these are this is the topic of a access method. So we talked about different access access methods starting from DSL, uh, uh, the cable TV uh, access method, and the fiber uh, to home access method, and finally the wireless access methods. Hmm? And Ethernet. And Ethernet for uh, institutional, صح? Institutional. And then, uh, last but not least, the wireless access methods, including Wi-Fi and cellular. Okay? So that topic has ended. So another topic, which is also, it's not new to us, okay, which is the physical media. So, uh, of course, uh, the physical media they are divided into two categories. We call it guided media. Guided media, the whole signal goes into a specific direction. And I don't want to say wire, because even wireless has guided media. Line of sight, bravo. Line of sight is considered guided. The whole energy of the signal is going into one direction and one direction. طبعاً, mostly here we're talking about wired. Okay? By wire, we mean that the signal goes into the wire. Okay? From one point to another. Okay? So, signal propagates in a solid medium. They, طبعاً, the, the most important or the most common are copper. And copper here, we have two types. Here, copper, we have UTP and STP. Unshielded twisted pair and shielded twisted pair. Both of them, they talk about eight wires. UTP, even the phone line is considered UTP. But we call it UTP cat 4, category 4. It only has four wires only. Uh, starting from CAT5, UTP CAT5, we have eight, eight wires, eight small wires. And if you, if you cut the, 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 the network cable, you will see eight small wires. If you cut the phone cable, you will see four thin wires only. Uh, so the shielded twisted pair is more sophisticated technology, and it can carry more traffic. Because of the shielding, we don't have to talk about the details of this, but whenever you see shielded twisted pair, this means that the, the quality of that cable is, is, is higher and it can carry higher bit rates. So, um, CAT5, sorry, CAT6 is based on STP and this is used for uh, gigabit Ethernet. Gigabit Ethernet that can, uh, that can carry layer 10 gigabits per second and more. This can be achieved using STP. Again, STP or UTP, it's a eight thin wires use guided signal that goes from one point to another through the wire. That's why it's a guided. Coaxial, the difference is that coaxial, you have one, one copper wire only, and it's thick. Okay? One, instead of eight, like henna, you have one copper uh, 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 wire, okay. Uh, so the, the 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 structure of the cable is different, and you have of course the fiber. Fiber, as we said before, we have single mode fiber, we have multi mode fiber, and so. On. So all of these are guided 
media, we call it حتى solid guided media, because we, as we said, there is a small exception. If we're talking about line of sight wireless, that's also considered guided. Like the whole signal is directed in a specific direction. Mention. <coughs> so, so for a twisted pair, of course, you have you have. Every two wires, every pair of wires are twisted like this, and there is a reason for this, which we don't have to talk about. There is CAT3, there is CAT5, those are the most common, and of course there is CAT6. CAT6 channel is used for, CAT6 is actually STP, not UTP, and it's used for gigabit Ethernet, for traffic which is much higher than this. Maji, any questions here? Type. Okay. For unguided, ba, for unguided, we talk about wireless. Unguided, manayi, the energy is dissipating in different directions. The energy is dissipating in different directions, and it propagates freely in the in the three D space. Okay, and that typically happens for all broadcast based wireless. Liam line of sight. you have ba, this me omnidirectional antenna, and the antenna dissipates the signal in all directions. Liam, this me a radio. So those are the uh, 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 the common types. So coaxial, we have one thick copper, and everything. Yeah, uh, the, 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 you have two concentric coppers, by the way. But one of them is used for traffic. The other one is used for what? Hadai. Is used to keep the keep the energy inside. Yeah, yani the energy does not dissipate outside that cable. Okay, so that's why you have to uh, to have like some concentric material around it. To keep the energy inside that cable, okay, and there is outer jacket and that's it. Nishi. طبعا this is the 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 uh, this coaxial cable is used for. طبعا by directional طبعا, okay, and it's used for two types for baseband and for broadband. يعني إيه الفرق بين broadband و baseband. يعني baseband يعني broadband. No, that's not accurate. It's not accurate. Although it, what you are saying can be possible using broadband, but that's what not broadband is all about. Okay? By baseband here, I mean that you have what we, what we want to, to send on the internet is, a, is at the end ones and zeros. Huh? Okay? When we convert this to digital signal, we convert the ones and zeros to digital signal using some line coding techniques. Okay? If this digital signal is sent over the line as a digital signal like this, we call this baseband. What is the alternative? We have to convert it to a high frequency signal. Okay? Technically, to an analog signal that has the same properties of the digital signal, but it's shifted in the frequency domain. Okay, that's that's what we call bro and this is that, that's why here it's listed a fakrinda ida hybrid fi uh, hybrid fiber coax, which is the technology that we talked about for cable TV, and we said that for cable TV we use cable TV for internet access through what. Through the cable modem that shifts the 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 the, the traffic in the frequency domain. So you have here the TV signal, and you have here the internet traffic. So how do we achieve this? By shifting the traffic in the frequency domain using broadband. So that's what broadband is. Broadband is about converting the digital signal into high frequency signal. Basically, we carry this signal over a carrier signal with a specific high frequency. Meshi? So we shift it in the frequency domain to a, to have no interference with the baseband. So we say the baseband. This is the baseband. Sending the signal as is without carrying the signal over a high frequency carrier, this is baseband. 
we send digital signal or analog signal, but as is. Like, for example, voice code. The voice, our voice is a is analog signal, صح? Our voice is analog signal. If we keep it within the zero to four kilohertz, this is bad, صح? But we can, for example, like like radio FM, we can take that voice signal analog as is, and then. Shift it in the frequency domain to create different radio channels. So this is this becomes a broadband. واضح كده. So radio broadcast has to use broadband. ماشي. If we don't shift the signal in the frequency domain, we call this baseband. واضح كده. تمام. طيب. ال fiber band. احنا ممكن ن... we can break و... يعني عشان المغرب 10 minutes and then we come back we have another like half an hour and then we go to the cinema that's usually what we do فيعني huh? you can alert me that okay so now we can break for المغرب at any point of time we can break 10 minutes and then we come back and so on ماشي طيب so the, the fiber optic cable as we said it's, it's made of glass and this glass supports the transfer of optical signal can get very very high speed طبعا طبعا when we say hundreds of gigabits per second because I mean the, the, the sky is the limit here as I said even this 100 terabits don't, don't pick it on me because I read this in one article 100 terabits per second this is the theoretical bit rate that can be achieved on fiber optics but again nobody has a specific limit for how, how much bit rate you can send over the fiber it's for us until nowadays, it's unlimited. You can you can think of it as unlimited, okay? But you need the technology to achieve that, which is which currently does not exist. So the main advantages, of course, of fiber. Satellite. Satellites, wireless signals, but uh, wireless. in wireless signals, yes. But wireless signal, again, we can answer this. We can take hours to answer this. It's, while the signals, but in, in specific frequency ranges, which usually they use low frequency ranges in order to have very, uh, uh, some more um, long, uh, my, eh? long wavelengths, yeah. very long wavelengths, so that the signal can, can so far. travel so far. Yes, exactly. Also, for submarine, they use the, the, the exact same concept. The main idea is that as the frequency goes low, the, the signal can travel longer distance because it has long uh, 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 wavelength. Okay? This, this is physics, by and it's based on physics. Um, so for satellite, they use certain uh, uh, frequencies that allows the signal to go very, very far, and it's wireless. In the satellite itself, you can use a fiber go away, and you go a satellite, you can use fiber. But see, from here to the satellite and from the satellite to, to Earth, of course, it's wireless. So anyway, so it's very high speed, طبعاً. This is the biggest advantage. And it's also, إبا, this is برضو إيه مهمة. It's low error rate. Why? Because, because, because fiber talks about optical signals. Optical signals this is not affected by the electromagnetic waves in any way, صح? Because we're talking about two different frequencies. But that's why we say that fiber, okay, has zero interference. Fiber, it talks about optical signal. Optical signal has يعني, zero interference. يعني, it does not get interfered with any electric signal or electromagnetic signal or any you know, signal stand. Yeah, the, the, the electromagnetic waves, by the way, they can get interfered by what? Even your microwave at home can affect your wireless signal. Because they are close in terms of frequency. 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz. Yeah, I'm fiber. I'm talking about fiber. 2 terahertz, 100 terahertz, and things like that. So the effect of interference has nothing to do with Fiber, and that's why this low error, error rate game in e, I mean, it, it, it does not get affected by interference from outside. Okay, 
because interference affects the error rate صح because it corrupts the signal by the way even wires they have some effect for interference and that's why they have some يعني, uh, uh, jackets and some material over the wires to reduce the effect of interference from outside okay but even in 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 in, uh, in wires they get affected by but in fiber optics now we're talking about terahertz, terahertz so it doesn't get affected by the interference in any way ماشي so it's immune it's immune to electromagnetic noise by noise here we mean interference ماشي any questions طيب um, So the, the, the signal carried in electromagnetic spectrum for uh, wires and stuff, so you have, um, so the uh, propagation environment effects, so here we're talking about the radio links in terms of wireless, but for wireless, for wireless we, we have different radio bands. So we have, you have the, 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 the Wi-Fi range for 2.4, the, the, the main ranges for Wi-Fi are a 2.4, gigahertz and 5 gigahertz these are the most common so of course you have less than that for cases like مثلا gps things like that for satellite you have ranges different than this صح بس those are the most common and those are used very often even for 4g and 5g they are used very often okay So for terrestrial microwave ranges, because we are using the, the, this range mainly, 2.4 gigahertz. For Wi-Fi, you have uh, Wi-Fi here, Wi-Fi uh, uh, 802.11, sorry, 0.11 G, or uh, 802.11 G, uh, G. This uses bit rates of 45 megabits per second or 54 megabits per second for cellular for 3G as we said we touch the bit rates of 1 megabits per second although for 5G we are getting into as I said around 1 gigabits per second this is only achieved with my with the millimeter wave which is not the case in our uh, in our side um, satellite for satellite communication The main issue for satellite is the, is the long propagation delay because the signal has to go through the satellite and then come back to Earth, okay? And that's why the bit rates achieved using satellite communication is, is, is significantly less compared to what we have nowadays. Of course, the ex exception now is what this guy has done, Elon Musk, that is different, the revolutionary, the amel hagat You can get bit rates much, much higher than this using satellite communication, but that's, we need to study this. So, how are you? The main issue that affects uh, this low bit rates is basically the, the, the propagation latency or the propagation delay. The fact that the signal has to go all the way to the satellite and then come back to Earth. And this delay is, is in the range of 300 milliseconds, and that's in, 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 in communication systems, this is significant, this is huge. Okay? So in the past, again, we used to have internet service provisioning through satellite communication, but that didn't last more than a يعني, few years, and then it, it, it became obsolete, nobody uses it. So one of the access methods for internet was actually satellite, but that disappeared right away. didn't last for a couple of years but now it's coming back with this new uh, so we have we have hundreds of satellites constellation satellites that now we can achieve very high uh, uh, data rates with satellite communication but that's this is not mature yet it's it needs some time by by geosynchronous here versus low altitude we mean that uh, 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 there are satellites which we call it geostationary حد عارف geostationary يعني ال the satellites themselves they have to this is earth right and of course 
you have orbits. So if you have a certain satellite, okay, if you have a certain satellite here, it has to rotate in order to make its relative location to Earth fixed. That's why we call it geostationary. So this makes communication easier. Why? Because if you have, if you have, for somebody here, okay, who is trying to communicate, fixed, is trying to communicate. But the problem is, Earth is a, is rotating. Well, listen, I'm not sure how to Earth is rotating, صح? At least most of us believe this. Earth is rotating. So, so when we rotate like this, at some point we become out of the range of this satellite. If that satellite doesn't move, so this satellite has to move. But the issue is, what is the speed of movement? So some satellites, some satellites, they move, they become what we call a geostationary. The geostationary is that they try to maintain their location, their relative location to Earth fixed, so that they, they make the communication easier, reliable and easier. Okay? So if your location on Earth is fixed, Chances are you will be connected to the same satellite all the time. Let's say. But again, life is more complex. So there are low orbit satellites which move with variable speed and they don't really have to be geostationary. Because they're closer. And, and that, that makes the communication a little bit tricky, but that's what life is all about. So, so here, you are also moving. Yani, now we're becoming move, moving as well. So Earth is moving and we are moving. And the satellite is, is also moving. So usually, that's why, ba, usually, for low orbit satellites, usually they tend to deploy more of these satellites to cover the whole orbit. Okay? For geostationary, they can deploy less number of satellites because they are fixed their their relative location to earth is fixed okay so it's easy for low orbit satellites usually they deploy more to make sure that when they move they move with variable speed but at any point of time they are covering the whole earth, earth all the time so if you move chances are you will move from one satellite to another but you can still maintain your communication. And that's what we do for, for, for towers. We move from one tower to another as we move. So, same thing. Same thing. Okay? Nowadays, one, one area of research, which also, يعني, if, if, if some of you are interested in some futuristic research, there's a huge amount of research on uh, uh, communication using satellite, but now they use drones for aerial communication and these drones can be connected directly or indirectly with the, with the satellites so there is a huge amount of research in that area where drones can move and they can, can, can actually provide some optimized internet access based on demand especially for events like World Cup or higher. you can deploy strategic drones to cover and to provide some internet access on demand in certain areas and in certain points of time. And these uh, drones might actually be connected either to the infrastructure of Uridu or sometimes using the, the, the satellites. And even sometimes they use command hierarchical topology. They use drones and they use some kind of balloons and from the balloons to the satellites. There are different levels. Yeah, there is a huge amount of interest in that, in that direction. Because, because of the fact that this technology, uh, command, it covers rural areas which, are, which do not have, يعني, believe it or not, until today, there are so many places on Earth which do not have an internet coverage. Rural areas, in different parts of the world, which do not have an internet access. Villages, areas, كتير. So with this internet, access method using uh, drones using some uh, hubs haps haps it's my h a p s haps the balloons we're using satellites you can provide internet access to any part of the world 
rather than being uh, يعني forced to deploy towers everywhere because this will be very very costly anyway معلش انا عملت انتو other areas يعني any questions so these are the 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 the, the media so here we we finish talking about the edge network for edge network احنا قلنا it composed of end devices these end devices they need to have entry point access to the internet so they need some access method so we talked about these access methods the other thing is that these end devices they need some kind of connection to the network okay whether this connection is guided or unguided through some cables or wires okay طيب for the core network خلاص احنا وفينش ذا ايدج نتورك ناو وي ار ان ذا هارت اوف ذا نتورك ان ذا كور نتورك يعني وي ار ات اوريدو ناو انسايد اوريدو بس اوكي سو ذا نتورك انفراستراكشر اوف اوريدو ات نيدز تو سبورت با سيركت سويتشنج اور باكيت سويتشنج ان ذا نتورك انفراستراكشر سو وي نيد تو توك اباوت ذا ديفرنس بين سيركت سويتشنج اوف كورس ذاتس نوت نيو ماني بيبول ذي نو ذا ديفرنسز سو وي نيد تو توك اباوت ذات فيري كويكلي اند ذن Uh, we need to talk about it from the statistics point of view. That's the depth that we need to cover it in this course. From the statistical point of view, what is the difference between circuit switching and packet switching? Because the, conceptually, we talked about that. We know, we know that difference. We know the difference between circuit switching and packet switching. But from a statistics point of view, what is the implication of this? Okay? I think we have probabilities about it. ف وي بريك فور ا ليتل بيت اوكي سو تو تو كونتينيو ذا ديسكشن از وي سيد وي كفرد ايدج نتورك وي كفرد ان ديفايسز اكسس ميثودز اند اول ذا ذا كونكشن هاو ذا كونكشن تو ذا انترنت از اند اند فور 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 نتورك وي هاف تو بارادايمز وي هاف سيركت سويتشنج اند باكيت سويتشنج سو So uh, they, they, they differ from the uh, uh, way that the data is transferred. So for uh, circuit switching, circuit switching supports the fact that first you have to, so for circuit switching, first you have to establish dedicated circuit. Okay? And the perfect example for this is the phone call. If you may, if you want to make a phone call, what do you do first? You have to dial the number. By dialing the number, okay, you are requesting to establish a dedicated circuit between you and the other party on the other side. Okay, this dialing this number would go into the network, okay, and the network, based on this request, first. The other party on the other side will confirm. If both of you, you confirm, then a dedicated circuit will get established between both of you. Okay? Then, and only then, if that circuit is established correctly, because there are so many scenarios where the circuit does not get established uh, successfully, the guy rejects your call. The network does not have dedicated circuits or dedicated resources to allocate to this circuit. Okay, there are so many scenarios based on which that the circuit might not get established successfully. Assuming that it gets established successfully, then you can start communication. The good thing about here about circuit switching is that because of the fact that this dedicated circuit is established successfully, the communication usually goes smooth. Be, because it's a, you have like imagine you have you have like some amount of water and you want to feed this water in a pipe so you have a dedicated pipe so the water will presumably go smooth right rather than having like a pieces of pipes and so you don't know that this pipe is continuous so once the 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 uh, uh, The circuit is established successfully. The communication usually goes smooth. Okay, right. So that seems to be uh, very nice. So where is the problem? 
The problem is that, so this is the advantage. The advantage is, is that, okay, so it's dedicated, communication goes smooth. However, the problem here is that this dedicated circuit has allocated resources which are allocated from the network. Yani you can assume that this resources is subtracted from the network. Okay? So even I called someone, okay, and then I left the handset and I went away. Okay? Does that mean that the circuit is not used or the circuit is dismantled? The circuit is still established and the resources are still consumed from the network, even if you are not utilizing it. This is the main reason that when we talk about voice calls, we get charged by a, by the second or by the minute, صح? When we talk about internet traffic, we get charged by a, by? لا 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 we get charged لا لا we get charged by the byte يعني. By the byte يعني معناها إيه? You have a plan, a certain number of bytes, right? So you get charged by the byte. Okay. The volume of traffic. طبعا nowadays طبعا الموضوع يعني we have unlimited uh, plans وحاجات زي كده and it's becoming cheaper but really the, 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 this traffic if if this is bad for the case of packet switching if you are not sending any traffic there's no resources taken from the network. Okay? يعني imagine مثلا there is a certain pipe to the internet, okay? Uh, one person here, and another person, and another person, all of them, they made phone calls, phone calls, okay? So all of them started the voice call at the exact same time. So this means that this, there is four different set of resources allocated to the calls of each of them. Okay, so which means that this this big link, okay, will divide its resources to make sure that all the four voice calls are going smooth. Nishi? Using some multiplexing techniques, yeah, and that, that, yeah, this is easy. Nishi? But the problem is these people they are talking 10% of the time. Each of them is talking 10% of the time. Okay? And 90% of the time they are not, they are silent. They are not doing anything. Okay? If they are not doing anything, does that mean that this dedicated circuit is dismantled or somebody else can use it, مثلا? No. No. Type, what is the implication of this? The implication of this is something, again, you, you didn't leave these days, but we, we used to live the days of the fact that you raise the handset, you dial a number, and then you hear a very nice voice telling you, all circuits are busy now. We don't have this message. It's not common nowadays because of the fact that, of course, the network infrastructure now is much more sophisticated and it can, and it can really support. And now, all of us are using wireless and so on. So life is, is, is much easier. But in the past, we used to have these DSTNs, landlines, okay? These landlines, they use switches, and they have a limit of capacity of, of a certain number of calls that it can support at any point of time. So in some peak hours, you dial the number, <coughs> and then you hear a message that all circuits are busy now. The switches cannot find resources to allocate to your call. Because all the circuits are used. واضح؟ مع العلم يعني if you if you know that other people are are actually making calls but they are not talking all the time, you feel frustrated because they are not utilizing the resources the way they should be. Okay. So the the main disadvantage of circuit switching is that it's not scalable. It's not scalable. So when the number of users increase okay the resources gets consumed very rapidly even even that 
these users are not utilizing the resources all the time. The example here is that they are only utilizing this resource 10% of the time. And that goes not only for voice, by the way, it goes for data as well. Yani imagine if you have dedicated circuit for your traffic. This is good. I feel happy. But 10% of the time I'm sending files or receiving files. And 90% I'm not utilizing it. So somebody else is, is more priority to use these resources more than me because I don't have anything to send over this, over the, 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 the dedicated circuit at that point. And that's mainly because of the because of the fact that you have to establish a dedicated circuit. And this dedicated circuit will be dedicated throughout your communication. So bad communication, this is data, this is voice, this is TV, doesn't matter. But circuit switching talks about the fact that you establish a dedicated circuit, and then this dedicated circuit will be used throughout the communication, even if you are not communicating anything. This is the main thing. So if I tell you all of these people, they share this medium and they are using circuit switching, and masalan henna that the 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 masalan, the bit rate here is X. And there are four people. Okay? Each of them are making calls. What is the effective data rate that each of them will have? X over four. If I tell you that. Each of these people is using this dedicated circuit 10% of the time. What is the effective rate for each one of them? Still x over 4. That doesn't add to me anything because it's a dedicated circuit. Mashi? And that's bad because, because they are utilizing resources even though they are not actually utilizing them. Wadah? So that's a, the bad thing about circuit switching. Mashi? فعشان كده بقى the internet internet in all, because the main thing for internet is that it has to be public and everybody uses it they cannot rely on circuit switching because circuit switching is inherently not scalable inherently not scalable okay so we cannot afford the fact that internet uses circuit switching as the main communication paradigm over the internet that's not possible okay so internet mainly uses the concept of packet switching. Packet switching, by no circuit gets established. If you want to send traffic, okay, you have the same, this is the same pipe, and you have four people, well, uh, five people, well, whatever. Each of them has traffic in a form of packets, okay? So these packets will be multiplexed over the line with no dedicated circuit established. Which means that if one is sending at one point, he is actually utilizing the whole pipe. Yani instantaneously, one is sending three packets, what about, back to back? He can actually utilize the whole pipe. Okay? And others will have to wait because there is no established circuit. There is no dedicated circuit for anyone. But this also implies that if all of them want to send traffic at the same time, that's about what happens in highways. Lawdan Samira, congestion. Okay? In circuit switching, congestion should not happen should never happen. Never happen. Why? Because I have to make sure I establish the circuit with enough resources before the communication happens. Okay? Now, we have 10, we established the circuits, we established dedicated circuits. Okay? The 11th one will come, then the network will tell, will tell this person, no, I don't have resources for you. خلاص, I consumed all the resources. Okay? So congestion should never happen for the case of circuit switching. واضح النقطة دي؟ ماشي؟ So this is the conceptual difference between circuit switching and packet switching. What is, what is, which paradigm is used on the internet nowadays? 
technically neither <laughs> okay it's it's somewhere in between it's it's actually packet switching but be, because why because packet switching suffers from a congestion صح circuit switching is not scalable طب اقفل الشباك ولا افتحه يعني موت ونسكت اي دونت نو فهم what they do is that they use packet switching but with some levels of guarantees we call that a quality of service okay they use packet switching but with some quality of service guarantees هم يعني the, the circuit switching and packet switching they talk about two extremes okay so Service providers they usually use packet switching, but with some quality service. And by quality service, we mean what? We mean that depending on your traffic, depending on the plan that you have with me, I can provide some quality of service. Yani, in fashion, yani, all of us are packet switching and we are all competing on the network. It becomes by, yani, كل الناس زي بعضها لا. I I pay. Qatar University is a big institution. Should. Content with me as a user on the traffic of the internet, that doesn't work. So Qatar University have to have certain agreement which allows the service provider to provide some guarantees on packet switching. So technically, it's neither. It's 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 neither on on each uh, on on neither of the extremes. It's actually somewhere in between. So this is circuit switching. Again, the each link has certain capacity, okay, and each request comes in. It has to establish a dedicated circuit which takes from this capacity. Once the capacity gets hit, خلاص, I cannot establish any more circuits. So each of these circuits are dedicated circuits. They get established. Once they get established, the traffic goes smooth. Even by even or يعني the 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 traffic goes in order. بقى خلاص. The traffic goes in order. So all the 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 packets that belong to a certain traffic, if it goes through pipe, it arrives in order. لو مثلا if I tell you there is a caravan of cars, all of them are going from QU to Al Khor. Okay. If I tell you this information, and all the cars, they go in the exact same route. Then they will arrive in order, in the exact same order, صح? If I tell you there is no restriction, each car can go in different directions. ماشي? Then you can say that the ordering on the other side is not guaranteed in that case. Even the arrival of some of the cars is not guaranteed. Some cars might get lost, صح? Someone is not, he does not know the way exactly, so he can get lost. Okay? That's what packet switching provides in terms of service. It's technically best effort. Packet switching tells you that you can go in different directions, which means that the arrival is not guaranteed, Aslam. And even if you arrive, the ordering of the arrival is not guaranteed. But circuit switching here is established, guaranteed. But the problem is, once you establish the circuit, it's being used, even if you are not using it. What happened? So the network resources are divided into pieces. By pieces here, I mean that I mean that even the the, the links, turn the links by links here. I mean that it's an end to end link, and here there should be routers and switches and stuff like. That. But but it's technically point to point, end point to point, and then this uh, uh, pipe, this logical pipe. Is divided into pieces of resources like this, which are logical, which are logical circuits. These circuits they get allocated to users. Once they get allocated to users, they are dedicated for this user all throughout the entire communication. Okay, and then if I need to establish another circuit and there is no available resources, then I stop. This user will not have any traffic. Even if the existing users they are using these circuits 10% of the time, خلاص they are using, and that's why, again for voice calls we get charged by the second or by the minute, even if we're not 
talking, even if we're not utilizing the resource. Uh, so pieces, each pieces by pieces, we mean each pipe, yani, is allocated to calls, okay? And resource pieces some might be idle if you're not utilizing it. That's the bad thing about it, okay? So the way that we divide the channel is either by frequency division or time division. And that's yeah, the, someone was calling, was, was talking about this. You know? It's Alice Wally. So the way that we divide by circuits is, is a, either we say that this link mustn't has certain, certain bandwidths, certain yeah, bandwidths, okay? And we will divide these bandwidths okay, into users. Each user will get allocated certain fee, or in time. This is time, and then each user will get some time slot. Voila. So if I if I get allocated a frequency or time, okay. If this frequency I'm not utilizing it, خلاص it's being allocated or consumed or خلاص. Okay. So if I if I divide this bandwidth mesa into ten channels, and I have an eleventh. User comes in, well, it's tough luck. We don't, we don't have resources to serve you at this point. But once I give you this channel, it's dedicated for you, which means that you have guarantees back. And that's why once we establish يعني, some voice calls, very rarely bad that this call gets a, although it happens nowadays, but this is because of something else. This is because of the fact that you are moving into an area which does not have coverage and so on and so forth. But the resources and the dedicated circuit is established for you. So if you remain mass in your location and the other side, usually we, we have smooth communication and the voice is clear and everything. But if you try the same thing mass on WhatsApp or Skype calls, so very frequently we, we have some issues. Why? Because of the fact that for WhatsApp voice, uh, for Skype and, and so on, that uses packet switching, not circuit switching. So at some point you may have congestion in the network class. I don't you don't have any guarantees. So there's no sharing. There's no sharing of resources. Each one has separate resources allocated to him or her. There's no the concept of sharing. And that happens using one of these two methods. So FDM, or frequency division multiplexing, each one has certain level of frequency, and TD, TDM, or time division uh, uh, multiplexing. So the channel is divided in the time domain or in the frequency domain. Okay? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. TDM, بس مجرد نوع, it divides the channel into time slots. In this time slot, بقى, you, are send, you, you can send analog signal, you can send digital signal, doesn't matter. The main difference between, يعني, طبعا, there are some advantages and disadvantages for each one. يعني, very quickly, مثلا, TDM, TDM uh, con, uh, is con, يعني, has some issue when it comes to uh, that, synchronization. The synchronization of these time slots is usually tricky. Because you're talking about multiple users, okay? Each one has to know that he, ha he or she has to start at a very, very specific time, at the beginning of this time slot. But each one has different clocks. Yeah, if, if, if you check the time now between you and me, chances are you will find slight differences, right? Huh? So I'm supposed to start at a certain time, and you're supposed to start right after that. So you can start and overlap with me, and then we have issues, right? Huh? So TDM always has some synchronization issues. ماشي. في المقابل FDM FDM has issues when it comes to about transceiver design. By transceiver design here I mean that the, the transmitter and the receiver. Okay. Now they need to support multiple frequencies. صح? So I can I can actually Transfer on this frequency or this frequency or this uh, during during different times of the day, I may get I may get assigned different frequencies. So the transceiver has to be sophisticated enough to be able to send on different frequencies. Okay, so the transceiver design in FDMA 
is usually more complex. So there is some level of complexity even to support, uh, either to support synchronization for TDM or support the transmission over multiple frequencies for the case of FDM. Okay? But both of them are possible. Yeah. So if you have four users here, and the four users, they need to have calls, and each of them are using four channels, there is no problem, no interference, each one has dedicated circuit. If each of them is actually active only 10% of the time, still, they are consuming the frequency. So, we can have a, some numerical, um, uh, numerical example. Now. So, if I tell you that, how long does it take to send a file? This file has a length of uh, 640 kilo bits from host A to host B over a circuit switched network. Over a circuit switched network. Okay? So the link speed itself, so you have, a, you have a link like this. And the link speed, the, by speed here, I mean that yani it's logically the, the, the thickness of this pipe. This speed represents the thickness of this pipe. Lower bandwidth, lower bitrate, 1.5 megabits per second. Imagine. Each link uses a TDM with 24 slots. Yeah, but this, this link is logically divided into 24, yeah, yeah, 24 dedicated circuits. Imagine. Yeah, but this user, logically, will take one of these circuits. So, type. Given by that, we have 500 milliseconds to establish the end-to-end -end circuit. So once you start the, 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 the communication, before you send this file, you need to first establish one of these dedicated circuits, okay, and then start transferring your files. What is the delay? What is the delay? It's not I don't know it's Yeah, all. Okay. So the total delay equals so first 500 milli millisecond. Now this is halas. I have to spend 500 milliseconds to establish the circuit. After these 500 milliseconds, what do I have now? I have an established circuit with how much bit rate band? 1.5 divided by 24. 1.5 divided by 24. This is the A, the effective bit rate that I can get. So what is the, 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 the delay? Transmission delay. Transmission delay. Now I have a small pipe okay, with a bit rate of 1.5 divided by 24. This is the thickness of my small pipe, which is inside the big pipe, imagine. Okay, how much time do I take to send a file with this rate? This is what we call transmission delay. Transmission delay, transmission delay basically the length divided by the rate. Okay, which means that here, I have to uh, uh, divide 640. Yeah, yeah. Here, the rate is, uh, is the denominator, so it becomes 1.5 divided by 24. Okay? And here it's the 640. So this is the transmission delay. So first, I have to spend 500 milliseconds to establish the circuit. Of course, we have to work out the units. Huh? Remember, this is millisecond, and this is, this is uh, megabits per second. So we have to work out the units. Yeah. But this is the main idea of it. 
is that the transmission, I have to uh, 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 go through the establishment delay, okay, and then the transmission delay. Okay, so this is the circuit establishment delay, and this is the transmission. So this is the total latency. حد مش عارف باقي واضحة كده؟ ماشي؟ Okay. طيب. Imagine that if I don't have to establish a circuit, I don't have to establish a circuit. There's no TDM. Okay. So wouldn't it be nice to just during sending this file only, if I have the entire pipe dedicated to me, which means that there is no 24 here. Okay. If there is no, because this 24 will will have to go up, which means that now. I, now I have 24 times the delay, technically. If I don't have to divide by this 24, then I can have a much shorter delay. Okay? That can be achieved using packet switching, but I can give you the entire bandwidth of this pipe, but for a short time. I can do that. Okay? Packet switching always relies on the fact that, hopefully, or statistically, يعني, if you want to send, I don't want to send. So you can take the entire bandwidth. And then when I want to send, you will, eh, you will stop sending. So I use the entire bandwidth. So in that case, it's good and the, the resources are utilized efficiently. But statistically, it might happen that both of us want to send at the same time. So in that case, the, the, the bit rate will be divided by the two of us. You can do that. Okay? But imagine if these two people are 100, 1,000. That's when you have the eight traffic jams. Congestion, down traffic jam, and so on. Okay? For the switching now. Yeah, if the 24, yes, if the 24 of them, they want to send at the exact same time, the same amount of file, then it's the same. But what is the probability, Bah? Uh, what is the probability that all the 24 users, they want to send the same amount of file at the exact same time? That's what we're going to do in the next slide. طيب. So packet switching it talks about the fact that bandwidth, bandwidth division into pieces using TDMA and FDM is not restricted. خلاص ما فيش. We don't have this restriction. If you want to send at a specific point of time, you can technically use the entire resources of this link, but for a short period of time, hopefully. And if it happens to خلاص. These two will use these resources divided between the two of them for this short period of time. So here the bandwidth, the bandwidth uh, 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 gets shared statistically. Here we get to probabilities. We have to talk about probabilistic access. Imagine. And we may get to resource contention. Resource contention, which means that Contention may a congestion. Yeah. Contention means a contend. Yeah, we are struggling. We are struggling. Each one of us is struggling to get resources from the network. Okay. So the aggregated resources now can exceed amount available, in which case, by in packet switching, if if the length bit rate, ماشي, has certain limit ماشي and all of us are trying to send trying to send trying to send the traffic congestion traffic congestion means what traffic congestion means that you have a highway and all the cars are getting into the highway and the highway cannot have enough chance to serve all these cars so these cars get blocked that's what happens inside the routers okay all the packets they get through the routers and these routers they have queues they have buffers so they, they, they can get all the packets from all the users, they put it in the, into the buffer, 
they process the packet, they do routing, طبعاً, and then they send the packets. So if the traffic that is coming in is beyond the capacity of this router, what will happen? The queue will get full. The queue will get full. What happens when the queue gets, gets full? It will drop packets. There's no other way. It will drop packets. And that's why packet switching supports what we call a best effort. Best effort. Not only that, by the way, the traffic, the traffic might get into circles if you are doing massive wrong routing. Packet switching never claimed 100% reliability from the network point of view. So packets get queued and wait for link use and this this by and packets store and forward. Store and forward man. We we discussed in network one but we discussed we discussed this in switching, so in switches we only switches they have two modes. Store and forward or a or fast forwarding or sometimes we call it cut through. Maybe? Store and forward معناه the packet first stored into the buffer completely the entire packet it's stored into the buffer I process it okay and after processing only after processing I send it I send it over so I do that for each one do I have other modes yes cut through means what every time I get a packet I just send it right away so I don't have to store the entire packet, process it, and send it over. Yes, the internet for routers we have to use store and forward. Switches bad difference. Yeah, switches they can use store and forward or uh, uh, fast forward. Type for statistical multiplexing. As we said, so if you have two uh, uh, nodes are sending using bad packet switching. We don't save here. The link is shared between them. We don't have pipes, but okay. So they can contend. They can contend on getting the resources from the circuit based on the traffic. Some some here, for example, maybe they they will be hundred megabits per second. B might send with different traffic with different bit rates. Okay. All of them they will try to share the the the, the link. Maybe. We don't have to establish a circuit. We don't even have to guarantee certain order for how these packets will move through the network. As I said, the example of the cars, caravan of cars, going from one location to another without having any restriction on the route. Okay? So one car might get lost, the cars might arrive unordered, and so on. You see? Type. So, Another BAE line example. So imagine if if I have a, a workstation here which is sending. Oh, well, the main idea here is store and forward. It's sending through a line. This line has a theoretical bit rate of R, ماشي? and rate here is R, and rate here is R. Okay. So if the traffic, if you have a, a packet length of L that goes through end to end the idea here if you are using store and forward what is the delay end to end and by here by, by delay here i mean transmission delay bar okay because there are two types of, of delays which we will discuss later the, the 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 most dominant one is the transmission delay the transmission delay is what if you have link and you have a packet Okay, the time that you take to convert this packet into a signal on the line, okay, this is called the transmission delay. And th this transmission delay is what is the length of the packet divided by the rate of the link. That's what simply the transmission delay is. So from the moment of starting to convert this packet to a signal on the line, that's what the transmission delay is. Maybe? There is some propagation delay, which is different. Propagation delay is something different. Maybe? Here, the propagation delay, we'll talk about it later, but the propagation delay here is, is ignored. It's is, is very low. But what is the delay given that we have stored and forward? 
the delay given that we have sort of four, which means that packet will get to this router, ماشي, will spend L over R delay here, and then it will get stored completely here, ماشي, and then it will get regenerated. So I will have another delay here which is L over R. صح؟ صح؟ And then it will get regenerated here again using store and forward. Because store and forward means that we put the packet, we process it, and then we regenerate the signal again. So every time you regenerate the signal here, you have to incur L over R, incur L over R. Which means that technically the total delay is a is 3 L over R. واضح كده؟ If we are not using store and forward, what is the transmission delay? L over R, bravo عليك. That's it. Because it has to be converted once to signal, and then the signal goes right away. ماشي? But this means that routers will not process anything, which طبعا physically cannot happen. Because routers, they have to perform routing. So routers, they have to use store and forward. So that's what a what a, 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 a store and forward here means. We're not using store and forward, then it's it's like one link, one physical link, which is not the case, طبعا. طيب, the last thing about that very important the, the, the example that very important, and it gets to some um, statistics by and for those of you who a, who forgot uh, probability and statistics, you need to really refresh your uh, your minds. So, if I tell you that there are n users, if there are n users, ماشي, and the link here, this link, has a theoretical bit rate of one megabits per second, and there are n users, ماشي. If I tell you that each user, they send with a rate of hundred kilobits per second, okay. If I stop at this point, and I and I tell you that we're using circuit switching in that case, what will be the effective data rate for each of these users, or what will be the number of users who can share this? Because I have to establish, I have to establish small pipes, صح? Ah, such that each one will have ten kilobits per second, صح? So how many users can share this? Ten users. So, if I tell you that each of these users is active ten percent of the time, does this add to you anything? If we're talking about circuit switching, no, it will remain as ten users. So, ah, here we how we want to use circuit switching. How many users that? There's no limit. There's no limit. Can be technically un thousands of users. So even if you have thousands of users, ماشي. هيحصل traffic jams. There's no circuit. There's no guarantees. If you have if you have uh, 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 one million users are trying to access this link, and each of them is ten percent of the time active. That's possible. I, they will suffer some traffic jams, but that's what packet switching is all about. It's best effort. Okay. Here, but, يعني, in order to to know the number of users, it has to be probabilistic. فاحنا نعملي what we want to achieve, what we want to يعني calculate now, is assume that we have thirty five users. Assuming we have thirty five users. ماشي. What is the probability given طبعا احنا we have now each user is active يبقى عندنا كده one parameter active the probability of being active is a is 0.1 10% صح؟ the probability of any of them being active being active يعني يعني they want to transmit at this point okay this probability is 10% or 0.1. ماشي؟ ماشي كده؟ If they want to send, they will send with a rate of 
10 kilobits per second. Okay? ماشي كده؟ طيب. What is bad the probability that if you have 35 users, more than 10 of them can send at the exact same time? Because remember, if more than 10 users are sending at the exact same time, then they will go beyond the capacity of the link because we said that maximum the link can support 10 concurrent users at the exact same time. صح? ماشي? So what is the probability that more than more than 10 can send at the exact same time? Because the good news is this probability is 0. 0.004 which is very low. Okay? It's very, very low. This is the first piece of good news which tells you that how effective packet switching is. And not only that, what if that happens? What will happen? What will happen if more than 10 users are sending at the exact same time? There is some queuing that has to happen at the router level, which is possible. Routers can really queue some packets in the buffer. So this is the probability that if you have 34 users, 35 users, that this probability is uh, uh, reflected or it reflects the probability of queuing the packets inside the router buffer. If it's less than this, then the router doesn't even have to queue any packets in the router buffer. It actually can process packets, process it and send it, process it and send it, and the, the, the queue does not fill up. It does not even fill up. Okay? Type. How about do we calculate <laughs> this probability? Okay? So, if we go from يعني, uh, prob probability and statistics, we have law of insami binomial distribution. If you have a pool of people or pool of uh, end users, what is the probability that subset of these users can, uh, uh, can do something at any point of time? Let's calculate first the probability that one user out of 35 pool of users may send. Or be active. And we know that the probability that uh, uh, one user is active is A, is B. Okay? What is the difference when I say one out of the 35? One user is active and the others are A, inactive. صح? So, what is the probability that a user is inactive? Hmm? Minus, uh, 1 minus P, bravo alayk. So 1 minus P. So when I say one user is active, P. And, and معناه in the probabilities multiplication. And the other 34 users are inactive. معايا ولا you are lost. I know you are doing the seminar. But <laughs> okay, so the other users are inactive. So we have 34 users inactive. That's it? لا. Why? Because this user might be Amr or Ahmed or Mamdouh or Kaza or Kaza or Kaza. So it has to be 35C1. Because it can be any person. صح? صح كده? So this is the probability that one user out of the 35 is actually sending. Which means that this user is sending and the others are not sending. واضح كده؟ ماشي؟ So if I tell you what is the probability of two users, then the one becomes two. And the 35, 34 becomes 33. That's it. So you can do whatever. So what is the probability that more than 10, more than 10 معناه 11, 12, 13, 14, لغاية إيه؟ لغاية 30. So the probability 
that more than 10 users out, out of 35 equal, equal to the probability of 11 users out of 35 plus or صح? 11 or 12 or 13 or 14 صح? or in probability معناها plus صح? and معناها واضحة دي صح? plus p of 12 12 out of 35 plus 13 and so on لغاية 35 صح? ماشي? what is the probability of 11 out of اللي هي ايه? 35 c 11 p p 11 1 minus p 34 minus 11 صح? and you can do the same for for all the others so if p the only variable here is p so if p is 0.1 if you calculate this this is a 0.004 which means that it's 0.04% of the time that more than 10 users are trying to contend on the channel at the same time which is very low probability and even if that happens this means a little bit of queuing delay in the router which is perfectly possible well that, that, this is a motivational example why packet switching is really efficient but this low prob probability doesn't mean that it never happens. Saba, it happens. And that's why we have network congestion in in the internet. So, but no, 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 no. We don't have this in packet switching. There is no concept of maximum number of users. That exists only in circuit switching. And that's what internet, you know, is 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 made of. You cannot have restrictions on the number of users. You cannot. Okay. You can slightly improve the experience for the users. Okay. Using either you embed more resources in the network or you use some quality of service techniques, which we did not talk about. That's another thing. Okay. But you cannot say that uh, I cannot uh, accept more than 100 users. That's not possible. In packet switching, that's, that's not what it's made for. It's made, for, it's made to be scalable for how, however number of users you want. Because technically, you don't have any clear information when you're going to be using the, 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 the resources. We don't know this. Nishi? It's, it's probabilistic. Yes, yes. That's what they do about to upgrade the network. To upgrading the network means increasing the amount of resources. In the, the links, for link speed will go up. Or for example, routers will, will, will be much faster. They have higher processors and stuff like that. They use clouds. Yani, there are, they increase the amount of resources in, in the network. Yes. But that's only to improve the experience of the users. That's all. But you cannot say, I cannot accept more than a million users or two million users. That, that doesn't happen. This example is, 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 is important. Yeah. 